Hey, welcome to today's episode on Everforward Radio. If you're looking for ways to improve your life, your wellness, well, you really need to be bringing more attention to your sleep. And that is why today's sponsor, Cure Nutrition and their incredible product, Zen, is gonna help you do just that. This is a non-habit forming, very, very relaxing, calming aid to help you slip away from the day to get into deep REM cycle sleep, to improve the quality of your sleep maybe even the quantity. If you're looking to improve your sleep, improve your wellness, improve your immune system, all the amazing, magical, wonderful medical things that sleep does for us, then I would highly encourage you to check out Zen by Cured Nutrition. You can in fact save 15% when you head to curednutrition.com and use our support code at checkout, EverFord. That's E-V-E-R-F-O-R-W-A-R-D to save 15% at checkout when you visit Cured Nutrition. Hi, I'm Arthur. I'm the CEO of LAMS Daily Protective Wear for Health Conscious People. And we invented the first radiation proof apparel that protects you from EMF and wireless radiation. And in this conversation on Ever Forward Radio with Chase, we dive into what is the science behind uh, wireless radiation, how um, these exposure to more EMFs have been linked to an increase in oxidative stress and um, can lead to a variety of conditions such as cardiovascular disease, uh, decrease in fertility or increases in cancer. And then um, we get into the positive, <laughs> the nitty gritty of how can you take action and uh, the few steps that you can take in your life to make your life incrementally better um, and live a better life today and be in better health tomorrow. Um, it's been a super interesting interview and um, I'm looking forward to you guys listening to it. All right, there we go. It's lit up like Christmas tree. Christmas in Los Angeles is a little bit different. Um, I mean, you for one, you're, you're outside. Here we are December 8th and uh, in a t-shirt. Uh, I'm inside. And I'm and, too hot. <laughs> you're too hot. And I'm enjoying my iced coffee as always. Uh, you know, temperature regardless. I'm always team, team iced coffee. But, um, you know, welcome to the show, Arthur, man. You know, welcome to... Welcome to 2020, man. So many, I don't even know where to begin. Um, it's like so cliche. Glad to be point. here. That's uh, at least a positive moment of yeah. 2020, I hope. Yeah, <laughs> you're smiling, man. You're getting some sunshine. You got a great attitude, which is all what this platform is all about. What is living a life ever forward, this ever forward mentality is all about. Um, life in and of itself is always going to throw us curveballs. It's going to have obstacles before us and uh, not to beat a dead horse, but 2020 has been everyone's biggest obstacle. I think a lot of opportunities for some, a lot of struggles for others, a little hodgepodge of each, um, you know, before we kind of dive into all the fun tech science stuff that we're going to be getting into here with uh, your company lambs there. Um, I would love to check in with you, man, as a human being, like, how are you today? Arthur, the human being, the guy, like, Check in with yourself, man. Where are you at today? You know, it's interesting. I was having this discussion with a few friends the other day. In a sense, I feel very lucky uh, for a couple of reasons. Um, number one, I've been, these past couple of years have been super intense for us um, at LAMS and I've been working around the clock. And so COVID hitting, for me personally, didn't change <laughs> a mm -hmm. lot mm -hmm. because I mean I'm still working a lot um, I have less temptations <laughs> because I can't <laughs> do much yeah. so I mean trying to see the silver <clears throat> lining here from my personal level um, yeah I mean not not a lot have changed um, and um, very very grateful to still be able to do what I'm doing to yeah. be able to contribute a little bit as well so I mean Generally speaking, again, December 8th, outside, doing my thing, can't complain. Mm. Yeah, no complaints, man. Um, I hear you. So I'm glad to hear that, you know, you're doing well. Um, but let's go ahead and jump right in. I, I really, I'm really excited to learn more about what you're doing at LAMS, um, the tech behind it, the science behind it, the, the meaning, the why. Um, I was telling you before we were hitting record there that 2020 
besides a lot of other things, uh, it has brought my awareness to a few key areas that I want to optimize more in my life, things that I've already been aware of and doing in my overall wellness, but also really tapping into where, what am I missing the mark on? Or, you know, where is a new room to grow and to learn? And this whole concept of always being around electronic devices, being around 5G, Wi-Fi, 4G, 3G, you know, EMF waves, hell, my microwave. Um, it's always kind of, for me personally, it's one of those things that I hear about and, and I just think, oh, it's fine, I'm fine. You know, people hype it up. Um, what really do we have to worry about? You know, help us understand maybe kind of the, the science behind all of this and then we can decide whether or not we wanna take action. Yeah, sounds good. Um, so first, I guess I'll start by highlighting what EMF are. So EMF stands for electromagnetic fields or you know, electromagnetic frequencies. And um, it's kind of a mouthful and it's often referred as wireless radiation as well. So it's the radiation that your electronic devices are emitting in order to communicate with the outside world. Um, mm. In most cases, your microwave is a little bit different. But um, if you're taking your cell phone, for instance, the way it communicates with the cell tower and gets the internet and phone calls and text, et cetera, is through wireless radiation. Um, same for the cell tower towards your cell phone. This computer right now is connected via Wi-Fi to my router in order to get the internet. That's another radiation. My, I've got my smart uh, lights at home uh, connected via um, radiation and your phone connects to your car via radiation. I can go on and on. Mm. Essentially, anything that is connected today um, emits and receives this invisible wireless radiation. Sure, it's and how they operate, how they it's communicate. how it works. Yeah. Exactly. So a lot of our world today, uh, since the early 2000s, has been built on these um, EMF frequencies, um, and that really changed the way we've been living, mm. mostly for the better. But also, as technology started changing the way we live and became a more and more important part of our lives, um, we've become uh, more and more exposed to these wireless radiation. Like, take your uh, the keyboard of your computer. If you have an external keyboard, most likely it's connected via Bluetooth today. Not there you go. <laughs> There's mine hanging hang um, on my Bluetooth. So everything has moved from being cabled and not emitting anything to um, being wireless and therefore emitting wireless radiation. Um, so Dr. Johnson, um, a very esteemed scientist in, in Sweden, was um, estimating that today we're exposed to about a quintillion more radiation compared to 10 years ago. So <clears throat> wow. quintillion is a one and 15 zeros behind. Um, I think Jeff meaning, Bezos just became a quintillionaire this year. Is that correct? <laughs> <laughs> not even, not even Jeff Bezos is at that level. <laughs> he, he might be the first one. He might be getting close one day. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> potentially. Um, <laughs> Got to buy some some of this Amazon stock. Seriously. Um, yeah. So I mean, it's been it's the the level of exposure that we have today is tremendously different from the one we had yesterday. And um, the safety standards of what, how much radiation can one device emit have been set in the 1990s mm. and haven't evolved at all since then. So back then, the use that you had was like this one brick of a chunky cell phone that you would definitely not put in your, cell phone, in your pocket right, and yeah. with which you would maybe call for two minutes once a week or whatever your use was. Like it was very different from number one, the amount of devices that we had, yeah. and number two, the amount of usage and, and proximity to our body we, we had. I remember back um, then when, when my family got our first cellular phone, it was, it was the whole concept of, oh, you never know when you're going to need this in an emergency. And I think my parents rarely ever even turned it on. They just like had it in the car somewhere like, oh, if we have an emergency, right? Um, so true. Totally, totally different reason for buying it. I'm, uh, I'm looking at the amount of times that I touch my cell phone a day. It's just like crazy mm. compared to before. I remember like those Nokia 3310. Oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> Playing Snake like, on it. And <laughs> yeah, th that was like Snake was yeah. probably like the most amount of time I was spending on them versus uh, now I literally like run. I, I, I run half of half of 
lens is being run through through my cell oh, phone. Our <laughs> businesses, our lives, absolutely. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, and now like why why do, why should we care? Like uh, why do we care about more exposure? And this is where the science comes in. Um, there has been over sixteen hundred studies today um, that have shown that wireless radiation have an adverse effect um, on the human body. And I'm going to try to avoid becoming super nerdy, but effectively mm. what those studies point towards is that wireless radiation are polarized radiation. And when your cells are exposed to polarized radiation, um, let me back up a second, mm. the membrane of your cells are polarized as well. Mm -hmm. And the moment this polarized radiation hits the, your cells, um, this radiation is taken by your cell as an external aggression that cascades into triggering messages to your parasympathetic immune uh, to triggering essentially an immune response mm -hmm. of we're under aggression and your immune system um, is not in check anymore so that means more immune stress which leads to which leads to oxidative stress mm. which leads to a lot of a variety of potential issues depending on what was brewing in your body initially so it's been linked with a higher risk of developing cancer a higher risk of cardiovascular diseases a higher risk of neurological disorders and a, a higher risk of fertility issues um, so a lot of different reactions depending on who you are it's not like you're exposed to wireless radiation so tomorrow you're going to get all of the above sure um, yeah. but if you have precancerous cells at the moment, um, your immune system being disturbed by this radiation is not going to help your body fight off those precancerous cells. And yeah. which is, by the way, like we all currently have precancerous cells. Oh, yeah, I, was, I was just going to say we we all are fighting cancer cells every day exactly. pre, in precancerous. Yeah, time. yeah, yeah. And um, welcome and to so being a human. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Uh, and so that's uh, that's the the issue with being exposed to more radius radiation is that you're leading to more oxidative stress. Mm. Um, you're leading to more free, free radicals in your body. You're le leading to more oxidation, and therefore you're leading to your immune system going from sympathetic nervous response to parasympathetic nervous response, which is your um, you're going from rest and digest to uh, fight and flight mode which is great if you're running um, a marathon. It's not so great if you're sleeping or if you're resting. Yeah. Um, and, and yeah, and so what's kind of crazy is that the science um, has been here for years and, um, and the, the reason why we've, we're only hearing about this today is mostly because of 5G actually, which kind of started the dialogue again um, but you have a variety of reasons why uh, steps have not been taken. And, and one of the most powerful reasons today is um, lobbying. So mm -hmm. um, if you look at the US compared to Europe, um, European cities, a lot of European cities have altered 5G development because of health concerns. Um, there's been a number of countries that have uh, launched nationwide campaigns about radi cell phone radiation awareness mm. and how you should try to avoid keeping your cell phone in your pocket, how you should try to avoid giving your kid a cell phone, um, a variety of things that we're not being educated here as much as we should. But it's starting. Um, the city of Berkeley, just north of us, mm. um, um, issued a, um, a, a law recently that if you're selling your cell phone in your store you have to put up a sign saying that if you keep your cell phone in your pocket you're exposing yourself you, you may be really? exposing yourself to more radiation than what's uh authorized by the fcc or recommended by so it's kind of like um how cigarettes have gone you know they have to put those i mean cigarettes you have to, i mean we we know how bad they are for you um like in, almost immediately but they have very very graphic very explicit kind of warning labels um yep. wow that's that's pretty pretty prolific that's, that's wild it's it's uh it's, it's fascinating because what happened straight away when when berkeley issued this law which was in 2017 um is that the wireless telecommunication lobby 
straight away attacked this mm. and appealed and appealed and continued to lost. And now it's finally in place since like four, I don't, I think six months or something wow. very recent uh, after a lot of appeals that the, the lobbies have lost. And um, a lot of a lot of scientists today who are studying the field um, from a political or um, regulatory perspective are saying that they're seeing exactly the same pattern um, with the lobbies and, and uh, the regulation, et cetera, as they were seeing for cigarettes back in the days, mm. which is we have the science, but there is a lot of money involved. And, you know, so it's not a conspiracy. Uh, it's, it's nothing, you know, like uh, 5G's are not giving, 5G towers are not giving anyone coronavirus or any of this. Um, but there I've are. I've heard that like, one. Yeah, I've heard that um, one. <laughs> you know. But there, there, there are definitely like, uh, you know, like the, the way science is like the, the way the media uh, are being fed information by the lobbies mm. are influencing what we hear as well. Um, and so people are not necessarily exposed to as much information as they should be. Um, and I'm happy to give you more examples of recent studies that have come out that, but I yeah, don't necessarily I, want to scare your audience too much either. No, I mean, I, I'm, I'm always open to... To, to the science, to the personal experience as well. I mean, but this is something I'll be totally honest, that is a very, very new territory for me and what I'm exploring. And I think a lot of people in my audience are exploring as well. Um, I mean, you kind of started it. Can we open up that can of worms? 5G, what is it? And why are people so worried about it? You know, beyond kind of just what we've been talking about of what, you know, these electronic devices and wireless signals emit that we already know, but why, why is 5G like the big bad wolf right now? What is it and you know, what's going on? What are people scared of? Yeah, so the reason 5G is getting a bad rap is because it's short wave, sh it's a short length, very powerful waves. Um, so 5G is effectively a faster way of transmitting the information, if you will. So faster equals more powerful mm. and um, wireless radiation become less and less powerful as you get away from them, um, which we can get into this. But if you have your cell phone two feet away from you versus one feet away from you, you're not getting twice as much the radiation you're getting. It's uh, it's a logarithmic scale. So you're getting mm. a lot more by getting uh, half as close. Hmm. As um, and so, um, to go back to five G, um, having such powerful waves means that if you want to stay at this level of power, you need um, a lot of antennas around you to have those short, um, short length, high power radiation to, to so, keep the the signal strong to to boost exactly. it right. Yeah, okay. So where previously you would have one cell phone tower per maybe like 100 feet radius, depending if you're in a, set, in a city center, uh, maybe one to 200 feet radius, you'd have one cell phone tower. Now with 5G, you're gonna get one 5G tower every block, uh, every corner of a block. Um, Which is great for refreshing more. Instagram, right? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you're not gonna have any connection problem for sure. Uh, but so you're gonna have more powerful, um, more powerful waves, more uh, and mm. uh, and more exposure due to the fact that it's gonna just be like omnipresent. And that's um, and so a lot of scientists that who have been studying the question of wireless radiation have been, um, have been, yeah, I mean sounding alarmed, uh, saying like, hey, we have a lot of data showing that wireless radiation have an adverse biological effect on the body. Mm. We, know what, we know what this effect leads to long term. We don't have the data yet as to how bad it's going to be on the long term effect, um, because again, it's a cascade of events. It depends, like the reaction depends on who you are, what's going on in your body. But so it's going to take another 20, 30 years before we know that like, oh, the cancer rates have increased by X percent or the infertility mm -hmm. rate has increased by X percent due to this. So the long term effects are hard to quantify just yet, but we know that there is a biological effect. And so increasing even more the exposure of people without 
um, more studies is um, is according to the scientist um, something that we should avoid mm. and and um, and yeah so that's that's why Brussels um, for instance in Europe have completely altered 5G wow. de- deployment waiting for more studies to be done on human health and uh, and the impact of, of wireless radiation um, but to be honest like the 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 question should already be at, i mean and and um, a lot of scientists have already um, petitioned a number of institutions about this problem way before 5g mm. because we are carrying a cell phone in our pockets all, all day we are oh, it's always on our, our wi-fi yeah, to yeah. our neighbor's wi-fi to everyone's um wireless radiation and um and yeah and so that's 5G really restarted this debate, and then the whole COVID nineteen coronavirus mm. uh, conspiracy theory <laughs> probably put some the rabbit hole on yeah. the fire. Um, but that's uh, the the real reason is behind like a, the, this deployment of new technology. I've I've started a lot of outcries from scientists mm. saying like it's um, it's not okay to have humans act as guinea pigs when it comes to this level of exposure um, and, and and to this level of, of potential danger on, on the future generations too. Isn't that kind of just how it goes? I mean, to play, I guess, devil's advocate a little bit, as we evolve and grow as, as a species and civilization, we, we evolve in many, many ways, biologically, physiologically, um, definitely technologically. Isn't this kind of just the give and take, the natural pull and, uh, of order of, of new technology and fear, really anything new and a fear associated to it. Um, fear that is grounded in science and proof, but also fear of just, we don't know. And sometimes not knowing enough about something I think can be warranted because we don't have the ability. We don't have the time or the data yet to kind of say, Hey, from starting point A to end point B, you know, here's what we can look at and measure and make a more justified statement or more, you know, justified guess, really. Do you think is it really that is it just, hey, this stuff really isn't that bad? It's just we just haven't had enough time yet to fully dive into it and study it to, to give that that educated scientific, you know, Hey, here's what we found, or or do we already know? Hey, this is actually bad for us. We don't we don't really need to wait for anymore. Yeah, I mean, it's a it's actually a super interesting question, and we can draw a lot of comparisons to pesticides, um, mm. to yeah. you know, um, plastic in water. To I mean, there, there's been a, a EPA, a, a, um, you know, mm-hmm. microwaving plastics, and yeah, definitely herbicides, pesticides. I mean, you could take this whole argument, I think, and just you know put it over the whole organic versus non-organic. Exactly. Um, yeah, good so, point. So it's uh, and and it's it's a very it's very very similar, which is like pesticides. We don't we didn't start like using pesticides and, and, and herbicides and whatnot just to just to have fun. It's like it's a real <laughs> yeah. benefit came um, yeah. from it. But uh, the flip side was, uh, yeah, it's not great for your health when you're um, ingesting this on a daily basis. And so hence organic food. And so what we're doing with lambs is like the same kind of um, solution as organic food is to like uh, herbicides. But to go back to your question, um, the data today is on the biological effects mm. and on what we're seeing long term on animal models. Um, so we've, uh, like scientists, have explored what happens on rats when they're in of mice course. when they're exposed to it's rats first always, right? Yeah, and what they're seeing is an increase in their rate of cancer for rats. Uh, what they're seeing is after five generation, generations of mice is being exposed to wireless radiation. Um, the fifth generation is uh, completely sterile and can't reproduce anymore. Um, so, but just in five generations? In five generations, which is pretty quick for mice. But, yeah. um, wow, wow. The, but now, so taking this with a grain of salt, which is okay, but we're humans, we're not mice, so what happens to us? Mm -hmm. So we know what happens biologically. Now, the long-term effect is where there is a question mark, meaning, yes, it increases our um, 
oxidative stress. Like there is a lot of question. Mm. There, there is uh, enough studies that it's not a question that our oxidative stress is 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 way higher, which is again like the root cause of a lot of issues. Uh, of issues. So to that then again, to that point, we can just say to some degree, you know, we know like we don't need to wait five, ten, twenty years to fully study it. Am I hearing you correctly? That we just know, hey, this probably isn't the safest thing without taking certain protocols into effect. Yeah, I mean, okay. we know we know it has an adverse effect. Mm. Now, what I wanted to say, and I'm not trying to like and make my point here, is like there are other factors too in our lives every day that have an adverse effect as well. Like just going yes. back to uh, pesticides, um, um, like organic uh, oxidative stress can be can be increased by uh, this exposure. If you don't sleep at all, like if you have very poor sleep or you sleep two hours a night, you're gonna have a higher oxidative stress as well. Like there are a variety of factors that can impact this and have this adverse effect. Now, uh, wireless radiation have a s strong impact. Like we've actually mm -hmm. done some studies where we're measuring the um, parasympathetic, the heart rate variability. Mm -hmm. I'm getting super nerdy here. But oh, I like, love it. Um, the heart rate variability of subjects, uh, depending on whether they're exposed to wireless radiation, uh, to whether they're making a phone call or not. And what we're seeing is the moment they uh, make a phone call, um, their heart rate variability goes uh, way down, um, mm. meaning, which means like uh, a higher stressor on the yeah, body. Yeah. And the moment we make a phone call by blocking those radiation with lens um, clothing and lens fabric, um, then the heart rate variability stays the same. Amazing. Um, so like kind of isolating the factor here of like, it's not the action of making the phone call because they're making the phone call in mm. either of the two situations, but it's really the exposure to those radiation that we're removing with the clothing um, that led to this decline in heart rate viability and increase in oxidative stress long-term. Wow. So um, we know the impact now, what is like isolating this one single in individual factor of increasing um, oxidative stress mm. and increasing your, your risks, what is this single factor for each individual going to lead to 30 years from now? That's what we don't know. Mm. And that's, but um, again, like you were talking about evolving, we are evolving technologically, but biologically, we're, it takes a long time for humans to evolve. And that's why you're seeing um, so many diets like the paleo diet, for instance, that's um, and th th that's why if you look at actually the variety of diets out there, what is removed most of the time is processed foods because mm -hmm. um, we're like, well, our bodies haven't evolved yet yeah. to process processed foods. That's kind of the blanket um, statement we can make here. The same analogy of like, hey, we don't need to fully know all of the things for the whole timeline to know this probably isn't <laughs> the best choice for us as a human being. Yep. Same thing with your diet. I don't care what your philosophy is on your nutritional approach. I think we all would be in agreement that the re reduction, if not total elimination of processed foods is a positive effect on the body. Exactly. And so at the end of the day, like eliminating, eliminating um, processed foods, like I think we all agree, like, uh, is it going to lower your risk of developing cancer long-term? Probably. Uh, is it going to lower your risk yeah. of developing diabetes? Probably like reduce inflammation, which, reduce oxidation, uh, you know, reduce bloating, reduce, you know, a lot of things. Yeah. It, it's fairly universal. I'll make that statement. Yep. And so you can take the same, that's, you can take the same approach for wireless radiation, which is we know the impact it has on the body. We now like, I'm personally not willing to wait 30 years mm. to know exactly what like percentage of increase in cancer risks uh, it has for me to to take action and and that's uh, and and then again like going back to to the original to your original question which was about like technology evolves mm. it's for a good reason like it, I mean it, oh Uber yeah. is amazing yeah, yeah. <laughs> or or Lyft like I don't care which camp you are like <laughs> pricing a button ride share is amazing. <laughs> <laughs> universal transportation i mean and what, what we're doing right here right now i mean we are talking about the possible harmful effects of what we're doing right here right now to connect uh exactly. it's this constant give and take i mean and look that's life that's health that's wellness that's that's negative stress positive stress that's stress that's that's you stress that's parasympathetic that's sympathetic uh it's this constant 
old as time dichotomy that we have to, I think, first just recognize. Uh, we need to then respect, but then we need to to understand. And the more we can understand this dichotomy, the more we can just be aware of the variables that can can tip the scale in or out of our favor. Would you agree? Absolutely. Yeah, totally. And I think yeah. a lot of um, a, a lot of what we can do as human beings who want to get the good positive sides mm. and limit the downsides of these positives is think about like what protocols what can we put in place today that limit as much as we can the yeah. downsides whilst maximizing the upsides and so like a lot of what we a lot of what's considered to be wellness today is actually in a sense um because of a it is to limit the downside of an upside so let me explain the yes. reason why we go yes. to the gym yes is because we're not chasing our own food anymore like when uh, you go back like uh, <laughs> ten thousand years, we're or not so, like, sling in a club behind. or a sword, or you know, we're not physically burning calories to then consume the calories. Yeah, exactly. We're sitting in front of a computer uh, for a lot of people, or um, for, for the most parts, like a lot of uh, of what we're doing all day is is not being active as as we would have been before. Mm -hmm. And so, mm -hmm. gyms um, and like physical activity is is actually limiting the downside that comes from the fact that yeah organized as society is as we are right now we don't have to run for our foods every day mm -hmm. uh, which is great <laughs> yeah it comes with a yeah i hate cardio if you're, on, <laughs> <laughs> if you're sitting on your couch all day uh it's not going to be great for your health so that's one example um like uh, organic food is 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 another one that we've already discussed and i can go on and on but a lot of the um health um and, and wellness mm. programs out there are effectively towards limiting the downsides of, of what evolution yeah. led us to 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 be like. Um, Pure Sapiens, uh, very interesting book about oh how oh yeah yeah we evolved blowing. as human beings and how like at, at the, the case that the author makes yeah. is like hey back then like when humans were barely organized like they were probably super healthy compared mm. to today. Uh, super interesting. So when. When, why, and how did you decide that this just wasn't enough to just learn about it uh, and to apply it to yourself and to actually take it a step further and to really dive into the weeds of it and to problem solve or attempt to problem solve and then, you know, create something out of it? Um, when, when was LAMS a concept, a thing? When did you go from I'm learning about it and how to in influence my own wellness to I actually want to make a difference? Yeah, that's a good question. Um... You know, it's interesting. So the whole wellness approach, um, you can probably hear it by how passionate I am, but it's been a very strong interest of mine mm. for many, many years now. And probably because of personal history, like I've seen people around me, uh, family friends or family members like getting cancer, mm. uh, battling with diseases and um, being young and healthy kind of realize pretty quickly that the easiest way for me to stay young and healthy, I mean, young, maybe not, but healthy at least, <laughs> uh, <laughs> was to, uh, to, to limit the risks um, and, and prevent rather than treat. And so kind of started this journey of health and wellness um, optimization in a sense. And so wireless radiation became a, um, it came on my radar pretty quickly and the reason why we started LAMS is because wireless radiation is actually not the only thing that the only external source that has an impact on our on our on our bodies, um, but it's one that we can very easily solve. I mean, easily maybe not because it took a long time to actually develop the technology, but one where uh, we realized that there was one step we could do, which was super easy, and that was removing putting a layer of protection on our bodies, mm. which is called our clothing, uh, that would actually block the radiation instead of just being regular clothing. And then we would remove completely this one factor without changing any habits and whilst being able to continue living our lives with all the technology we want, um, no matter whether you, you think that it's good to have technology or bad, like um, at least we can completely remove this factor out of the equation and we can potentially even embed more mm. technologies inside this clothing 
um, as long as we can make the the, the wearer healthier. So uh, to give you a sense, like our T-shirts are also blocking ultra violets from the sun way oh, nice. better than a traditional T-shirt. So traditional T-shirts don't block all the UVs, uh, ultraviolets from the sun um, because of how the, the knitting and, and the threads are, are organized. Well, that's amazing uh, whereas... news for me. I, I, my mom's a melanoma survivor. I actually, on my back, oh. I, I had about a six inch chunk taken out a, a biopsy that was, it was um, almost like, it wasn't precancerous, it wasn't melanoma, but they were like, hey, this is very, very sketch. <laughs> the doctors Whoa. in more medical terms, they're like, hey, good thing we caught this now kind of thing. I, I, about six inches um, in about, um, I believe it was five millimeters deep um, on my back, like subscapular. Um, so wow. yeah, I mean, who knows? I mean, that could have, I mean, I, I go out in the sun a lot or it could have just been years of walking around in the wrong t-shirt, right? I mean, yeah, it's so many variables. Yeah, for everything like this, like again, like a ton of variables, but um, but sun ultravioletes are obviously one of them. And so um, we've designed the t-shirt, our, our NMC t-shirt to be also blocking ultraviolets. And there's a lot that we're working on, but the, the, the stance that we've taken is, well, if we're going to be wearing clothes all day, as we're already doing, we might as well have this cloth, uh, we might as well use technologies that make mm. that that so that those clothes have a positive passive impact on our take health, what we're already protecting. doing and just make it better yeah as best as we can yeah and and yeah and make them healthier so we've kind of like created the clothing for health conscious people in a sense that was like the idea behind it was like we're doing all of this we might as well make it so that um, tomorrow, if you're wearing this, you're maximizing your chances of being healthier just by wearing lens versus like whatever whatever else you're you're wearing otherwise. So that's kind of what prompted it. Um, and and to be honest, like it was at the beginning like the, my own personal search for a solution, uh, which was like, okay, well that sucks, but at the same time, I have my cell phone on me all the time. So yeah. what can I do? Um, and so it took then many years of uh, R and D uh, with lots of very, very uh, talented engineers, <laughs> yeah. way more talented than I am, um, in order to develop this technology and, uh, and be able to, uh, well, passively block the radiation without having to change any habits. You, uh, I'm looking at your website now and, um, you know, you guys break down so much in here. I, I think there's a lot of very credible information. Um, I mean, you've talked about the EMF radiation blocking the UV rays, um, Talk to us a little bit more about this uh, this pathogen disclaimer in here. You talk about the silver fibers, and and silver fibers for me is something very, pretty familiar. Uh, I, I've worn a lot of clothing that uses that. Um, Roan Apparel is one company I know that um, kind of stands out in my opinion in terms of its uh, um, value, in terms of its antimicrobial, anti-stink, a lot of things. Um, what is so unique about this fabric you're using um, that works, you know, against pathogens? Yeah, um, I mean. It's uh, for, for the pathogen aspect, um, it's pretty similar to what Roan um, is, is using. In You're familiar, of familiar with Roan? Come again? You're familiar with Roan, Roan Apparel? Oh, uh, yeah. We, okay. we actually know the founders. Uh, oh, yeah. Nate's been on the show. He was, Nate Chuckett's been on the show a long time ago. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, so it's a small world, obviously. Yeah. But, yeah. Uh, so <laughs> a very similar principle. So in order to break it down real quick, um, silver fiber, um, silver ions um, essentially break down the membranes of bacteria mm. and um, and viruses uh, for a lot of viruses. Really amazing. And so, uh, so yeah, so it's uh, it's a very well known antimicrobial and antiviral agent for many many years. That's where the, the expression uh, a silver being born with a silver spoon in your mouth comes from. Mm. Because rich people were using silver, um, okay, yeah, um, cutlery. You know, I mean, silverware. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, right. Duh, because silverware. of the antimicrobial <laughs> effects, wow. um, they were even used to drinking silver or gold uh, for these. Uh, for, I think it was silver. Yeah, um, drinking silver for the antimicrobial wow. properties. Um, so very well documented for many, many years uh, properties, and um, a lot of the antimicrobial apparel that you can find out there integrates three to seven percent of silver fiber 
um, into uh, into the garment in order to have some of this antimicrobial effect. Mm. In our case, um, we have 60, uh, 50% of our fabric, which is made out of silver. Um, 50%? So we have 50%, yeah. Wow. Um, that's actually how our technology is built is by, and we're using silver for another, um, originally for another, in order to be able to block wireless radiation, we're creating what's called an electromagnetic shield using the silver fiber. And I'm happy to explain afterwards how it works. Oh, but, yeah. um, because of this very, very high proportion of silver, we have a very, very strong <laughs> antimicrobial and, uh, and antiviral uh, effect of our clothing as well. Um, and, uh, and yeah, so wow. that's, uh, that's kind of a, it's kind of a, a secondary effect of how we built originally our technology and, um, and that's what led us to choose silver as well as a material. Oh, I love um, that. I'm actually scrolling through. I, um, not to be rude, I apologize, but I, I, you guys have so much great information. I wanted to, you know, reference a few things on the website here. Um, you really do have it covered from head to toe. Um, looking at you know beanies, underwear, uh, t-shirts, you know, even the face masks and stuff. Um, was this a part of the decision making process of hey, we're going to start with key areas of the body to protect first because. Uh, you know, short of creating a bodysuit, um, you know, we want to be mindful, I'm sure, of our major organs, you know, in, in our, our abdomen and our sternum area here, our, our head. Um, exactly. Did that play a role? You know, why, Absolutely. why blocking things from the head and these kind of like key areas on the body? Yeah, um, that's exactly how the decision making process went. And uh, it's interesting, like we're, um, my email is actually public. Um, and I am getting so I'm, I'm, emailing with our clients all the time wow uh it takes now a long time to so if you yeah. become a, if if you become a client you'll receive an email from me um shortly after your order uh asking you what's up and <laughs> we, uh and so because i'm striking up so many conversations with our clients uh by the way for the listeners out there i may take a few weeks to reply but uh i but am you will reply everything. Yeah. Um, and I will most likely reply um, unless it's a customer support inquiry and then I'll direct you to the right person. But anyways, uh, the point being, we're getting a lot of requests for our new products and new types of products, but uh, and we're taking all those requests into mm. consideration. But the way we've um, we've prioritized um, new products is essentially how like let's protect the key areas mm. in the body uh, from an exposure perspective um first and then uh expand on the types of products so we had people asking us about a variety of different tops for instance mm. and whatnot and we're like well we'll get there once we have once we're able to fully protect mm. what's important today so we started with genitals because you're putting yourself in your pocket all the time yeah let's um, go there i those were the two areas i wanted to really focus on there were uh the genitals, uh, the the nether regions, and then the brain, uh, and particularly in all my own research of you know the possible negative effects of EMF and cell phones and all this stuff, it was all about the guys, uh, particularly for us looking at reducing sperm count, um, yep. which you know we know then if if that's happening, uh, we most likely are going to have a drop in testosterone, uh, which is where a lot of guys you know through our aging, but also you know in the gym kind of natural declination. What's up with us guys? You know, what's going on down there? <laughs> How is the underwear helping? <laughs> yeah. Uh, so actually, the the reason why you're seeing mostly studies on men when it comes to this is for a couple of reasons. Number one, science has always been super biased mm. and consider that women are just the same as men. And uh, yeah, they just don't have a different pair wow, of genitals okay. but uh, aside from this like same model no worries like you can just study men and it's going to be all the same for women so historically mm -hmm. women have been studied way less than men when it comes to science and it's slowly changing and i but i think there is still a very very strong bias today um that scientists are finally recognizing that yeah maybe actually women are somewhat different than men yeah right no shit. but <laughs> sorry man, no, no shit, shit. <laughs> um so yeah uh so that's one reason and the second one for when it comes to fertility is also because it's much easier to measure sperm count or mm. uh sperm in any factor about uh 
fertility for men than it is for women um, because for men yeah. you know like it's a cup uh, and then you analyze this for women you actually have to have oh, a pretty invasive procedure. very intrusive yeah um so but that doesn't mean that for women there is no uh, there there's been some studies made very little compared to men and uh it's actually there is a very strong case for protecting your genitals uh, and your ovaries if you're a woman as well um especially given the fact that as men we're producing um sperm all the time uh so new sperm whereas women have their oocytes stored for life mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. in their ovaries and so meaning that if um if wireless radiation can have a damaging impact on them uh which again like is very exploratory as a field sure, at the yeah. moment. um but if it has an impact on women um then the impact could be for life and irreversible wow. so um, even though like I'm, I, and i'm gonna get into men in a second but just wanted to highlight this which is like no, yeah like a lot of the studies have been on men we're talking about sperm count and whatnot but i think like uh, women should and it's there is a very strong case for protecting your ovaries if you're a woman and you're planning on having kids someday um now when it comes to men there has been lots of studies done um one of the um key studies uh that a lot of scientists refer to has been done at the cleveland clinic which is uh, the country's leading center for uh, research on fertility and that showed that men keeping their cell phones in their pocket for more than four hours a day were experiencing a 50% decline in sperm count. 50%, uh, 5 -0. 50, 5 -0, yeah. Um, as well as um, anywhere between 30 to 50% loss on a lot of factors such as uh, motility, lifespan, morphology of the sperm itself. Um, so not great. <laughs> <laughs> uh yeah um, not ideal i mean losing half uh a day from walking around with my cell phone in my pocket is um not ideal but also when you hear that just don't carry your cell phone in your pocket like it, it is a very big statistic but also a very easy thing to kind of remedy yeah or wear the underwear like that's kind of why yeah, we, yeah. we got started with lamps is because like i've heard from i mean actually like to give you the the, the real story of i mean i've never hidden it but of how we we got started with lambs yeah like, yeah the the moment we actually like started working on the product like came back home and started engineering this was after dinner with friends where we all took out our cell phones from our pockets put it on the table and started discussing like hey who here heard about the fact that we shouldn't put it in our, in our pockets and like majority was like yeah kind of all of us and we're like and we just literally took it out of our pockets here, right? And we're like, yeah, yeah, <laughs> we, we just did. V very, okay, cool. very Good easy aha so, moment, yeah. <laughs> yeah, so we're like, all right, well, we're all doing this. And then same evening, I go on the WHO website, figure out that uh, wireless radiation are in the same category, mm -hmm. category as uh, uh, class 2B human carcinogen, which is the same as uh, car exhaust fumes. And um, I don't know about you, but uh, if a car is running in my house, I'm moving out. Um, mm, yeah, <laughs> if a car true. Running all day, yeah. unless it's Tesla. Uh, but uh, so, so yeah, and that's uh, that, that was the, what prompted us to 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 get started. And so, um, interestingly as well, we've had, and this is super unscientist for people listening, uh, uh, super scientific. Sorry, uh, but we've had when new uh, men were joining the team um, with Lambs, we were. Um, offering them the chance to like sponsor a sperm count test. Uh, a sp really? A, a, a sperm test, actually. Talk uh, about putting your money where your mouth is. Events. Wow. Damn. And then after, and uh, consistently what we've seen is roughly like, essentially like doubling the sperm count after three months of being with lambs. Um, wow. And wearing lambs all day, obviously. Like, okay. Which, so we, we have, uh, we're working with a few doctors and uh, fertility clinics and fertility companies, which are actually actively recommending lamps to their patients um one company uh that that uh that is doing um sperm freezing for their clients was telling us that um, about 70 percent of their clients actually have too low of a sperm count to be considered fully fertile 
and that the number one recommendation they give their clients is to either wear NAMs or like limit as much as they can their exposure to or even range. both probably ideal right <laughs> <laughs> yeah i mean P protect probably. protect and you know and add some distance between you and the the possible source contributing to this happening to you that's probably the ideal but then again, like who wants to go and live in the middle of the woods in a in a in a cabin growing your own vegetables? Like that's probably the healthiest thing. I don't know, do man. Twenty twenty's got me thinking about that more and more. <laughs> uh, I went to a, I went to Jackson Hole, Wyoming, a couple months ago for my birthday, and it's pretty appealing. Just like vastness of nature and no people, it was pretty appealing, man. <laughs> that's true. That's true. No, not as say it. I, I was in uh, in the desert a couple weeks ago. Uh, that was pretty cool. But then again, but not like, realistic, uh, you know, not real, not immediately yeah. for sure. Yeah. Um, and just like, even if you were tomorrow to be like, well, you know what? I'm going to stop Wi-Fi. I'm going to remove all those smart bubbles and I'm going to like get a landline and, and stop all of this. The reality of it is you're, you're still going to have cell phone towers. You're still going to have 5G deployed. Yeah. You're still going to have neighbors who have Wi-Fi. Yeah. Just being in, at the office, whenever I pull up my Wi-Fi, uh, I've got like 40 different sources around me. Yeah. Um, so for people living in the city, like uh, a lot of times, you can take steps with yourself, which are going to limit your exposure to the closest sources, which again, if we go back to the beginning of our conversations, uh, of our conversation, are the ones, the closest sources are the ones exposing, giving you the most exposures. So that's great, but you're still going to have exposure. Um, and again, like less exposure is better than and more uh, obviously but um but yeah um the the that's the reason why we again why we we started with them so we're like well mm. habits are tough to change number one and mm -hmm. number two no matter what we do we're still going to have um we're still going to be exposed so um if we do this it's one change no habits to be changed like just clothing and then we're good to go for yeah the next few years without having to worry about this, without having this little voice in our heads whenever we put ourselves in that bucket saying, you shouldn't be doing this, you shouldn't be doing this when you have yourself on your yeah. laptop on your laps um, or all this exposure. So really like the the reason why we, we like one of the very core value of the brand, be, of, of the, the reason of the, the reason of being of brand, uh, of lambs and, and the brand that we're trying to build is, is optimism and, and mm. um, and hope in a sense, right? Which is like, hey, I love like, that. We want to be living an active lifestyle. We want to seize life as much as we can. We don't want to be holed up mm. in um, a bunker because of all you, those you can't live things. in fear. Yeah, yeah. If you're like, uh, yeah, if you, if you stop being scared mm. of like the external elements that can impact your health, then oh boy, you're in for a ride. Um, and so we've really tried to take the opposite approach, which is like, sure, like all of the, like, there are a lot of things that can impact our lives out there. Um, but there are also a lot of things that you can do to limit your risks and still live a great life. Um, you know, like, uh, and so if you, if, if some of the listeners, um, end up either becoming a client or joining our uh, text group you can find on instagram my phone number uh we're oh, we'll make sure to list all that in the show notes for everybody awesome uh, we're giving out um tips also related to other things like we don't we're, we're not obsessed with wireless radiation as as you would expect us to be <laughs> um but we're rather obsessed about like what kind of changes can you do like what kind of tweaks can you do in your life uh, that have that are going to have a positive impact um, and that are going to either on immediate wellness or long-term uh, wellness um, that 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 you can that that you can do right now, mm. and uh, building a lot of relationship with other uh, companies and 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 people in the field in order to bring the most quality products or information to 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 our audience. Because at the end of the day, that's what Lambs is about. It's about becoming healthier um, long-term. Is like better living today, better health tomorrow. Mm is one of our motto. I um, love that, man. That, that's beautiful. I mean, it ties so well into my whole mission and you know, what I say living a life ever forward is all about is bringing heightened attention and awareness into these, these areas of our life that can, you know, on a very small scale, but compound over time or something very that. major today. Um, and I, you know, in the health coach in me loves what you were just talking about as well of 
that is how you make actual change and you get adherence with people. You meet them where they are and you help kind of just make swaps. It's not reinventing the wheel. It's not asking you to go live off the grid and in fear in the you know mountains somewhere, but it's just what are you already doing that you can just do a little bit better, that you can make one tiny little change. And, and like, look, you know, if you're interested in lambs and you want to, you know, throw them on, like you're already wearing clothes, you're already wearing underwear, maybe, unless you're like, you know, Joey from Friends and you don't believe in underwear, um, you know, but, you know, little things, you know, hats, clothes, masks. Now I even see you guys have masks. Um, what can you do to make a swap in your life that is going to add value, that is going to improve your wellness or even quantitatively or qualitatively get you closer to a very specific goal that you have for your life. Um, you know, one final question before I get to the final question, Art, that I didn't ask you. Um, why lambs? What does that ma name mean? Where did you guys come from that? Yeah, uh, right before I reply, I just wanted to add on, on to something yeah, okay. which was about the swap, like you were mentioning masks. One thing that we did with the mask, for instance, was adding a filter pocket. I saw uh, that. Number one, because it might um, be better for limiting particle um, mm. exposure, but also because we're using um, PM 2.5 filters, which are um, uh, essentially filtering out pollution. Mm. Because we figured, well, if we're going to be wearing masks, um, we might as well have a higher purpose of the mask and make them I healthier for you. And we both live in Los Angeles. Yeah, there are forest fires all the time, and there is, I mean, less pollution now than it used to last be. Last few months, still, is, yeah, for uh, sure. And so we've kind of tried to take this approach of like, well, we're wearing masks. How can we make these masks as good for your health as you, yeah. as you can? The answer for us was like number one, using our antimicrobial antiviral fabric, uh, and number two, adding this um, filtering, mm. this pollution filtering. Um, ability because that's going to make them just mm. a, a, a much better compared to just wearing a piece of cloth uh, over your your, your mouth. Um, and so going back to your question now, um, which was why lambs? Uh, very interesting question. So a uh, couple of reasons. Uh, number one, we're nerds. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, then the Greek letter that is used to represent uh, radiation in physics is lambda. lambda. Yeah, okay. And so um, we kind of got rid of the da <laughs> <And> that, <laughs> at the end, but like uh, it was like a short, shorter mm. version of lambda and, um, and then referring to the wool of a uh, lamb, uh, which protects him yeah. whilst being very comfortable. Um, because a lot of the efforts wow. that we've, uh, we, we came, like we, when we started developing the technology, um, which is going to be like, to explain it super simply, we're creating what's called an electromagnetic shield, um, mm. wireless radiation cannot pass through conductive, a conductive mesh, mm. uh, where the size of the holes is smaller than the wavelength of the radiation. Mouthful, just picture me trying to go through this fence behind me, the whole oh, did you set head. this up did you have that background on, on purpose that is like the most perfect <laughs> totally. analogy i was wait i was waiting just for damn that. <laughs> well done sir well done uh no it's actually my first time but i've done a couple of interviews perfect here, analogy yeah <laughs> uh, um so that's the principle that we're that we're using and so this principle is is um, actually, we've kind of stolen this from uh, technology used in NASA spacesuits. Mm -hmm. And when I say stolen, like, it's very public. Um, and we adapted it uh, into what is our waste stopper technology today. But then a lot of the efforts that we've done is making this comfortable because mm -hmm. we could make it so that it blocks radiation. And actually, like, if I cover you in lead today, you're going to be blocking all the radiation you want. Yeah. But it's probably not going to be a very comfortable piece of armor. Um, not so much. And... And so with LAMS, we wanted the name to really reflect all these efforts that we've taken in order to make the product comfortable, to make the fit good. Mm. And uh, we keep on improving. Um, I mean, we're working on it every single day in order to make the products better because the goal at the end of the day is that uh, we want you to want to wear LAMS, not just because of the mm. um, of the, the protective abilities, but also because it's the best T-shirt, the best underwear in your closets and uh and we're still actively working on it but we already have a lot of our customers actually saying like hey this is the mm. 
like my best piece of underwear that I've got. Oh, you guys have been killing it with the function and the fashion. Like say, you know, I, uh, I have underwear, t-shirts, um, I think another pair of underwear. Yeah. I, I mean, I'm all about, you know, being comfortable, but functional at the same time. And if you, if you can literally weave those two together, um, that's the best of both worlds in, in yep. my opinion. Um, I love it, man. I, I had to ask, I was curious about, you know, lambs and you know i love the lambda tie in there you're making bruce banner very happy uh <laughs> you guys just need to make one that's going to fit the hulk right um yep uh, that'll probably defeat the purpose we, do you, you know what you know what's funny is that we we interestingly we have a lot of uh professional athletes and olympians uh. as clients of lambs for obvious reasons like you mentioned testosterone mm. uh, we touched a little bit on on um heart rate variability, which is something that uh, athletes are very paying oh, yeah. very close I attention to. Use my whoop device. I'm checking my HRV there every you. day. Yeah. There you go. And so working with a lot of, of Olympians and, and athletes, um, because they wear lamps to uh, have an additional edge, right? And uh, some of them, I won't name anyone, uh, but mm. some of them are like coming back to us when, when they get the t-shirt originally and they're like, yo dude, like, <laughs> I'm six eight, <laughs> and yeah, I have help, help like a brother out here. Tribes, yeah. like, <laughs> can't wear this, and so we we kind of have to like work because we make a solution for some of these. But um, <laughs> that's awesome. There for the, so for the elk, like what I was saying is like, uh, yeah, we've actually made like some pretty darn big garments in the past too. All right, so twenty twenty one, the the Hulk lines coming from lambs, or you know anybody six <laughs> eight and above. First, the first one to get them. <laughs> Well, Art, I, you know, I want to thank you so much for coming on, man. I appreciate your time. Um, I, I thank you so much for, you know, paying attention to these things in your life to increase the value and wellness of your own life, but then taking it a step further and doing what a lot of people don't. And, and that's really trying to problem solve and then sharing that problem solving and sharing solutions um, with the world through your products, through your works, through your content. So for that, I say thank you. Um, and to go, to go back a little bit here, like I was saying, everything that you're doing, uh, it feeds into what I believe it means to live a life ever forward, you know, how we can just, you know, change one little thing or sometimes change all the things, right. But we're doing it for our lives, our well being. Um, what does that mean to you? Those two words ever forward. How would you say you live a life ever forward? Wow. You caught me, um, off guards here. I think like <laughs> one of the first things that comes to mind and we, briefly mentioned it, but it's something that to me is such an important principle in my life is the compounding effect. Mm. Um, I'll give one simple example, which is I used to drink soda like many people. And I realized that the thing that I liked about drinking soda was the fizzy aspect mm. and, uh, and the fact that it was fresher than like back then I was not filtering my water um, of like uh, just pouring myself a glass of water from the, from the tap. And I replaced my soda by sparkling water in the fridge in bottles. And that was like a super, and I got the same pleasure out of it. But all of a sudden, I was drinking sparkling water instead of like mm. Coca-Cola or whatever the hell I was drinking before. And that was like one simple replacement that led to, I can't quantify the amount of sugar that I've not exposed. And I, other stuff like I mean, oh, sugar yeah. is just the tip of the iceberg. Mystery ingredients sometimes, yeah, yeah. Um, for the rest of my life, and I did this change when I was like I don't know twenty, and so like I've been for like the past ten years effectively like just replace this one thing, and it's been compounding, and that's just one of those elements. Um, so like ever forward, I think like it's like what tweaks can you do today? Like at least for me, right? It's like what tweak what process what what change or what habits can i implement today that is going to be long lasting into mm -hmm. making my life more interesting or healthier or better um so i've been trying to do this as much as i can in various areas obviously health is probably my number one focus but travels is mm -hmm. another one that we touched on um, um before we started the show um yeah. And uh, a lot of areas like this. And um, yeah, man, like I think what's what I find exciting for myself personally is that I'm at the beginning of the journey, you know, like mm -hmm. there are so many 
like uh, ever what those two words like trigger for me is like excitement about yeah. keep on building a better self, mm. keep on building a better life, keep on building something that I'm that that is and 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 keep on giving back more. Mm. That's something mm -hmm. we haven't touched on, but that was mm. like we're giving um, away hundreds of thousands of meals to feeding America. No way. Um, Amazing. Okay. The, the, like Giving all of back. this kind of ties into like, how do you, how, how do you contribute? How do you make your life better? How do you contribute to society mm. more? How do you create deeper relationships um, by compounding small, small things and, and learning? And, and that's effectively yeah. what you're about at the end of the day. And that's why like having people like you having ever forward radio is like awesome because it's um, a great way to to take action and mm. and start this journey or or continue to live this journey. So thanks for having me. Yeah. Like it's, uh, oh, it's beautiful been, answer, man! An honor to 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 be able to share my story here. Yeah. Uh, why we started Lambs and kind of um, hopefully the audience got uh, got some uh, some nuggets of information in, oh, in our conversation. Oh, absolutely! Uh, I have so many things that are going to be, um, you know, linked for, you know, for lambs as well in, in the show notes, you guys definitely make sure you check the show notes. We, we expand upon things much deeper there, all the links, all the, all the social, all the studies. Uh, I'm going to be sharing a lot of uh, my own kind of research and studies on a lot of things that we've been talking about in here. So, um, you know, trust, but verify, you know, you, you've got, you know, an expert here in, in this field, but go do your own research. Don't just take my word. Don't take art's word. You, you need to trust, but verify in all things that we do. And then certainly when it comes to our health and our wellness, um, before you put anything on your person, in your body or in your mind, really. Um, so again, thank you so much art for your time. It's been great here, man. Um, I uh, appreciate you. It's been fun. Thanks Chase for having me.